and you might ask yourself well wait the 2020 chieftain has the new 116 thunderstroke more horsepower more torque this motorcycle has the older 111 thunderstroke less horsepower less torque but here's the thing with less than a year of riding under my belt performance power horsepower that really wasn't my priority what I cared about was comfort I wanted it to have good power to do anything I wanted to do something that could handle twisties handle straightaways something I could be on for hours and at least give myself a better chance of being comfortable pain-free so the 111 is more than enough more than enough and so I took the chieftain out to the parking lot with John the owner still a new rider he still wants to make sure I'm comfortable competent to ride this big heavy motorcycle and so I got on the chieftain of course I'm nervous it's huge it's huge I think the scouts 550 pounds this is 850 wet something like that but I got on it I couldn't quite flat foot it sitting in the seat but the balls on my feet were very very firmly planted on the ground if I stood up a little bit I could flat foot it without a problem it's heavy you feel the weight of it just sitting there but you know using the friction zone I just duck walked it around the parking lot I didn't lose my balance I was very careful like overly careful I would say because I didn't want to drop it but I also wanted to make sure that I was comfortable with it did that it was fine John said yeah take it out so I took it for a ride did a few circuits around the industrial area and wow total different experience a lot more torque which I love I love torque you know horsepower is great but you know I can get up to 100 <laughs> I'll get there eventually and I can still go 100 I'm not racing anyone where horsepower means a damn thing to me but I love high torque I love torque in the twisties I like feeling that extra power it helps me feel like I'm more in control of my motorcycle that's just me so I really dug it and I love the electric windshield you know it's got a stereo system but honestly it, when you're riding at high speed with your helmet on you can't hear a damn thing anyways you can tell it's on but you're not hearing lyrics to songs at least I'm not so that really didn't factor in the other day when I was making the, my intro video I mentioned that you know when I got a bagger that the infotainment system I, I didn't really care about the radio or anything and that on the highway you can't even hear it well it just so happens that in the helmet that I'm using right now I have a, a Bluetooth system that for whatever reason when I plug it into the Indian Ride Command, the volume, no matter how high I make it, is too low for the highway. I can barely hear anything. So yesterday on the way home, going the speed limit on the highway, uh, I couldn't hear any music and I said, screw it, I might as well play around with the system. And I put it on, I put it on max. And of course, this is an Indian, so the sound system doesn't go to 10, it goes to 11. And it actually worked really well. I was very impressed. I don't know if you can hear that but anyways I just turned it off uh, it works like a charm so I just turned the Bluetooth off and as you can see this is you know part of the appeal of a bagger I mean I'm in a lazy boy going the speed limit but I'm a lazy boy you can't beat it but I really enjoyed it was immediately comfortable with it from stop start to stop and I think it looks absolutely beautiful next up was the 2020 Challenger and again mechanically it was very comfortable uh, for balls on my feet firmly planted on the ground couldn't flat foot it but you know the the clutch felt great 
you know, compared to a Scout, the, the actual clutch lever is bigger, fatter, wider, which is more comfortable. And the shift lever is also bigger, more comfortable, more is a smoother transmission than on the Scout, in my opinion. Uh, on both bikes. So I did the duck walk with the Challenger and I was fine, but I was a little wobbly. It had a lot more, it felt like it had a lot more weight up front. And John's view was it's a fixed fairing bike that tends to be a little heavier on the front wheel. And that's why I was wobbling a bit, but I still took it for a ride. Um, it was great, great motorcycle, a lot of fun, really fast. But as I was finishing that ride, I decided I liked the Chieftain better. And I'll tell you what it was. One, that wobbliness was annoying. And at low speed, I figured that could be an issue for me. But the thing that really put the 2019 Chieftain over the top for me was, one, the sound of the exhaust. It has this pillowy, deep rumble that I absolutely love. And as great as the Challenger is, I can't stand its exhaust. It sounds more like a sport bike than a big cruiser. And that's not my thing. And the other factor was price. I mean, honestly, this is a 2019 model. The 2020 models are out with a bigger engine. They're a lot more expensive. And I was able to get a fully loaded Chieftain. Every option you can get well, I mean, not every option you can get there. Pretty much just one way to get them. But I got a Dark Horse, which is their premier, you know, Chieftain. Uh, for the price of a basic 2020 uh, Chieftain. So, yeah, you know, I'm missing the 116. If over time that becomes that big of a deal, I can always do the upgrade. Or who knows, maybe they'll have something else by then and I'll just trade this in on something new. But anyways, that's how I got my Chieftain. Oh, and on the BMW, I sat on it in the showroom and it was so wide. I really didn't think there was a chance in heck I was gonna flat foot that bike. And I couldn't even barely get it off the kickstand. So I just didn't bother. You know, I'm a new rider. That kind of stuff is important to me. I wanna give myself every chance to be safe while being comfortable and enjoying myself. So that's why I have a bagger having ridden a motorcycle for like 11 months now. And I don't regret the decision. I love my Chieftain. You know, in just a little over two months, I've already got 4,200 miles on it. And I could not be happier. Are there times when I would want more power? Sure. You know, if I'm on the highway going 80 and I want to give it more juice you know at that point you get the throttle to max and it's it's getting there and it's fast it's still a motorcycle it's not a car but it's not the same thing as when you're in second gear and you gun it and you take off like a bad alley you know well you know what so that's me that's my riding experience and I'm competent moving this bike at low speeds low speed maneuvers u-turns slow turns all of that I need a lot more work I'm still very much a rookie but I'm safe and there's nothing I can't do on my bike and I practice all the time go to parking lots set up cone drills recommend that for anyone and that's that that's what I got for you today like I said my intent with this channel is to film fun rides. I don't know how much talking I'll always be doing, so I don't know how many people are actually going to want to watch this stuff, but I'll be sure to put links to maps and GPS coordinates in the comment section. And I guess before I go my first introductory video or series of videos after I chop them up there are some youtubers that I've been watching for quite a while who have 
great pages, great channels, great content for beginners, well, really for anyone. Fast Eddie and Moto Jitsu. His videos talking about how to maneuver bikes at slow speed are outstanding. If you have questions, if you're not sure how to do something, how to set up an exercise, check him out. Another very helpful channel is Jerry Palladino's channel. I'll put links to all this down below. Just again, it's all about low speed maneuvering. He sets up his drills and you see riders doing it successfully, unsuccessfully. He explains why. I always found those kinds of videos to be the most helpful. I mean, like for example, when I first started riding, when I'm going out to a main street, it's a bit of an incline, make a right turn into traffic. I mean, at the MSF course, they don't really teach you what to do when you have to make a right turn with traffic oncoming and you've got to stay in the right lane. And Moto Jitsu's got that on his page, his channel. It's very helpful. Other channels that I watch, who do I watch? Uh, MC Rider, again, like the other two, is very helpful with practice drills and pointers. And, you know, I watch his videos when he puts them out. And then finally, the one and only Yammy Noob. <laughs> I dig his videos, you know. I'm kind of past the point of the lists, but I love his his videos where he's out riding a bike, especially his Turbo Busa baby. I think it's turbo at this point. You have to excuse the messy splice, but when I was talking about YouTube channels that I liked and appreciated, I forgot my favorite one. Uh, that would be the one and only Cycle Cruiser. Now, don't get me wrong, you're not going to learn how to ride a motorcycle watching Cycle Cruiser's channel. I mean, he has his list like everybody else. The reason I love his channel is because when he's on a bike and he twists the throttle and he starts laughing like a maniac, that's how I feel when I ride a motorcycle. And I can't help but watch his videos just to listen for that because that's me. Anyways, just had to add that in here. Thanks, guys. Anyways, that's what I got. Thanks for watching, and I'll put more videos up soon. I don't have a schedule, so check back. Catch you later.